Hello guys! Welcome back to Not Just Maker! It's Marco here, and today we talk about how to work on models with a crazy density of details without, uh, well, going crazy! When I was young, miniatures used to have way less details! The advent of digital modeling completely broke the limit of what you can physically put on a figure sculpting by hands, so I think we should uh, really talk more about how to handle these designs that, for the sheer amount of stuff to paint, can often become quite intimidating. Today's model comes from the mini wargaming project Ravage Star, Armies of the Veil Touched, and you can find the link to their game found campaign in the description. In these cases you can totally choose the road of subtlety, and highlight just a few focal points, but if you plan to fully embrace the canvas like I'm doing here, I'll tell you about a couple of ideas coming from classic still life and portrait painting that can be really useful to avoid losing time, visual energy and mental sanity. The mutated demonic side and the convoluted pointy shapes of the armor screamed Zinch! So I decided to dive into the classic colors of the God of Change and the theme of uh, dynamic mutation, applying uh, more desaturated and uh, dull tones in the core of the model with a sharp and uh, scratchy definition, opposed to contrasting uh, vibrant hues painted with uh, waves of free-flowing brushstrokes on the tentacles of the right arm and the sword, to frame the more grounded uh, central figure with an explosion of uh, fluorescent living colors. And since the main topic here is the work on details, I went for kind of a comic book look, a stylized illustrational take that gives priority to the two-dimensional elements and their internal tones, shapes and textures, with less external impact from the virtual environment and outside inputs. Don't forget to drop a like to help the diffusion of this video and the channel, and of course subscribe to join my painting journey in every corner of the hobby. And if you want to support my work, check my Patreon page, where you can find articles, extra material, and the real-time footage of my videos, with every single little line and brushstroke. Thanks a million, guys! In this video more than any other, I found super important to show you a bit of the last stages of the work on the wet palette at the very beginning of the step-by-step, -step, because the model will look really, really ugly for most of the process. So I tried to hook you with a little peek into the future to let you understand immediately my plan and the end game. I start with an aggressive underpainting of titanium white, using a low frontal angle to build a ton of light on face, shoulders and upper chest, that's where the majority of the visual storytelling happens. In the last couple of videos my first layer has been a soft neutral grey, that I needed to set up a muted winter mood, or the base for more grounded, realistic colors, but here I can go crazy with a more solid application of white, that will passively add a huge amount of luminosity and extra vibrancy to my comic book palette. I keep the spray a bit more zenithal and less directional and illustrational on the cape, where the folds easily get an effective volumetric definition with a simple light from above. I always use some kind of underpainting or sketch to support my colors, or I set it directly with the colors, so especially for the veterans of the channel it's easy to forget its importance, but this is the first foundational step into the painterly attitude that I mentioned at the beginning. The core idea that uh, taking uh, different forms branches out into every step of the process is to work from general to particular. In the black and white step, this idea takes the form of simply being aware of the macro volumes of the model and the general light setting of the scene. I'm not chasing the information about the wrinkles of the face, the little scratches of the cape, or the shapes of the smaller tentacles. But with a quick, loose and simple step, I want to understand where basic shapes like cylinders, cones, spheres and the very basic flow of lights and shadows are, and to block them on the figure. In this stage of uh, sprayed colors, 
The goal is to see if the scheme works in an harmonious, interesting way, and I completely ignore the smaller elements, the little details and their future high contrast, sudden changes of tones. The cape is filtered with a diffuse coat of uh, transparent red, because uh, that is uh, the general sense I want to give to the cape, but really nothing more than this. And even the application is extremely subtle, because I know that later I'll work a ton of new tones inside this base, so I need the space and the luminosity to add new stuff without uh, losing the general information. Same idea for the mutating skin, and all the other organic stuff. I really don't care about the exact separation of the shapes, or a defined modeling, I just want to see an initial rough rendering of the chromatic flow appearing on the surface. I think uh, this is even more explicit and particularly clear in the basic work on the armor. Here I'm using a cold dark green that will not be the color of either the armor or the gold trim. The armor will move to blue-gray sensations, and the gold to non-metallic muted beige and tones, but they share the basic idea of a cold block of elements opposed to the red and pink warmth of the other adjacent shapes. So I summarize all this stuff and future steps in the application of a uniform, unifying cold base. Using green I can cut a couple of corners later, because since at the end green is just a mix of blue and yellow, I can easily go both ways, simply altering their relative quantities, or pushing on one of the two components. Again, general to particular. <laughs> With a quick, loose and simple step, I have set the scheme. Oh, and I don't know if you noticed that, I don't care if this green overlaps a bit with the red of the cape, or the skin tone. Those will become natural extra reflections, and a juicy visual noise in the shadows. I fix a couple of extra basic tones using a GW contrast straight from the pot. I use a grey-black for the skirt to create a neutral level of separation between the more saturated, interesting and meaningful elements, but with an extremely irregular and smudgy application, to play some subtle automatic movement and texture in the finish. Yellow for the creepy demonic eyes. and a more brownish yellow to base a couple of non-metallic bronze gold details. With the macro macro shapes in place, I take a little step into a new, more controlled level of their internal modulation, and to start pushing on the thinch look, I use fluorescent inks to model a bit the shapes with some crazy ethereal hues. These paints are extremely transparent, so perfect to work with the delicate and controlled impact and uh, soft transitions. I use uh, pink for the shadows and uh, the general mid-tones, to keep a bit of the idea that uh, this is still in some way human skin, becoming more and more unearthly and unnatural. Then the flow goes into green, that interacting with the pink and uh, the soft skin tone gets a gross turn into unhealthy territories. To end up into blue to make clear the allegiance with Thinch, and to give the idea of blocks of armor, mutated, moved and fused into the flow of flesh and tentacles. I kept the focus on the organic elements because it's where you can see a clear chromatic change happen, but I have used a bit of these tones everywhere to increase the vibrancy and make the scheme more unified and coherent. 
With the quick, loose and simple step, I have increased the complexity, definition and saturation of the scheme. There are a ton of ways to suddenly increase the definition of a sketch like this, but in terms of versatility, nothing beats oil paints. As you can deduct from uh, the vibrant tones I chose, their transparent, uh, low impact nature and their relatively high values on the palette. My main goal here is not to set a super sharp dark definition that uh, would have benefited from darker and more uh, staining tones, but to create more uh, visual noise, subtle internal transitions and flows of tones and to increase the general saturation with a filter action. Ooh, and a little note, I keep and use the satin slightly glossy finish created by the inks as a sort of a satin varnish to passively inhibit the darkening staining action of the oils even more. Even for the pure black that's always a strong opaque tone, I switch to the student version of my oils that, because of its cheaper nature, contains less pigment and more fillers and it delivers a softer, less staining impact. I'm not looking for any kind of precision or uh, clear borders, and I apply the tones next to each other, blending them wet on wet directly on the model. The advantage of uh, using oils is that uh, you don't have to rush to keep working wet on wet for all the time you need. The blend of tones is always uh, super smooth and continuous with just a couple of brush strokes. And if you don't like what you're doing, you can simply wipe the paint off and start again. Yeah, I know, it's scary and ugly. But I can use all these amazing properties to leave on the model only the stuff I really need. Smooth, localized blends and microtransitions, and a ton of definition around these uh, super intricate shapes that I can use to make my next and final step way easier. This is probably more than 70% of the work we usually do on a model. And nothing until this point has been about uh, nerve-wracking precise applications, steady hands, small pointy brushes or details. Single elements and details should always be the very last addition to any kind of painting. It doesn't matter if you're working on a miniature, a canvas or a mural with spray cans. And again, if you made a good job in these steps, everything else will be much simpler and much more enjoyable. I can now go back to the highly saturated fluorescent tones that are the chromatic theme of this model, side by side with low key, earth and skin tones to create the contrast of the transformation. In uh, this new macro stage, the idea of uh, from general to particular takes a couple of interesting forms, one of which uh, hides the other secret for an effective, uh, enjoyable painting flow coming from the canvas masters. The most obvious incarnation of the concept is uh, the first work I do inside the shapes I got from the previous steps. The sketch defined the arm as a couple of cylinders. The sprayed tones defined those basic shapes into smaller cylinders, cones and curves in the form of tentacles and claws. And the oils brought out their thin borders, edges and even cuts and other negative concave textures and imperfections. So what I do is simply to enhance, reinforce, refine and clean all this stuff.
I make the lines a tiny bit sharper, the tones a tiny bit more vibrant, the lights a tiny bit lighter, and the lower mid tones a tiny bit darker. Yeah, I don't touch the proper shadows, at this point I consider the deeper, lower angles completely done. So again, no stress, doubts or difficult situations, because I'm just working on stuff that's already there, simply increasing their information in a smaller and more particular way. The second form of the macro to micro idea is a bit more subtle and definitely falls more into the emotional, kinetic and artistic side of painting than the more technical needs of uh, pure modeling, and even if it becomes more important in this uh, stage with the brush, you can also imagine it as an underlying secondary theme and aspiration for all the previous steps, and that goal is uh, maintaining the abstraction. Defining something complex, like a human arm as a couple of cylinders, is for sure a big jump into abstraction, so you can see that uh, we are already into this uh, mental territory, but you can stretch this idea until the very last teeny tiny final brushstroke. And I feel that the only way to explain this concept is uh, to massively zoom into a picture of the final product. At this level, not a single one of my brushstrokes has a clear logic meaning, or a direct linear connection with the sculpted shapes underneath, and everything is super loose and abstract. But when you zoom out again, or you see the model in its more or less real size, everything comes together. Especially on a super complex model, if you paint every volume as a linear smooth progression from light to shadow, or every single edge as it is, as a simple straight line, you get for sure a super sharp, good looking model. But where's the fun in that? Where is the energy? Where is the illusion of movement? Or even your personal touch in that? Of course, this uh, point of view and brushwork is biased by my personal taste, preferences, and by my obsession for old uh, paint masters, but yeah, this is true for almost anything related to art. Again, the real point is, uh, even in the stage of the extreme final rendering and conclusive super sharp definition, I'm not worried about the details or their small size, and for the most part, not even about what they want to represent, and I think that this way of letting the colors and the brush flow as they want is extremely liberating, taking a lot of stress and tension out of the process of miniature painting. Plus, it's super fun. <laughs> And uh, here is the final result. Uh, yeah, I know, I understand that uh, the last part came out as a bit esoteric, but when you start digging deeper, you discover that the act of painting has a lot of that inside. But when you try to put it in words, everything becomes complicated, because of the lost in translation between uh, these visceral, emotional effects and the need to explain them in a technical way. But it's important for me to point out that these ideas work not only for advanced painting, but in terms of technique and efficient visual output. They are probably more effective for speed and army painting, where you can actively use them to cut steps and working time. If you check my high quality speed painting series, you can always see a simplified version of this kind of abstraction in the final brushwork with way less density of brushstrokes, because of the need for speed and essentiality, 
but because of what uh, those uh, few brushstrokes achieve and deliver, the rewards of abstraction are even higher. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe. Remember that you can ask me anything down below with a comment, and you can follow my projects during the week using one of my socials. And if you want to support my work, check my Patreon page and join the community, or maybe ask for a commission. See you next week, guys!